Hi, I'm Richard Duffy. I'm the SAP Business One Product Evangelist and I'm part of the SAP Global Small and Mid-Size Enterprise Team. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me for this demonstration of our SAP Business One solution and the service management functionality inside SAP Business One. We have customer relationship management embedded right throughout the entire system and no customer relationship management solution would be complete without giving you the ability to manage how you service your customers. So let's go and take a look at that right now. Jumping back into the SAP Business One user interface, you'll see we have the service functionality. If I click on the menu option for service, you'll see that that uh, drops down a couple of different areas of functionality. Now, the service management functionality is, is designed so that even if you're not offering service for products, but let's say you just want to record general customer service related issues, you can use the service functionality for that. For example, maybe you're an organization that um, provides a generic service or you sell uh, services to customers and a customer rings in with a complaint or with uh, some feedback. Well, you can use the service call functionality to record all of that. But of course, on top of that, if you are selling a product, you can create customer equipment cards, you can create service contracts that manage how you service those, uh, those pieces of equipment at your customers. And then not only that, you can also create a solutions knowledge base. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So the first thing that we wanna look at is the uh, customer equipment card. So a customer equipment card can be automatically created when you sell a product to a customer. I'm gonna look at an example of a customer equipment card that already exists. So you'll see I have a product here which is my server point 10,000. And this is a product that I have got a serial number for. And what the customer equipment card does is it allows me to show which customer that piece of equipment was sold to. It allows me to record additional information about the address where that particular product is located. It allows me to see all of the service calls that have been created for that particular product. I can see if that piece of equipment has been covered by a service contract. And then I can also see all of the sales data and any transactions relating to that customer equipment card. So for example, you can see here is the delivery note where I shipped that particular product, the server point 1000, out to the customer. And you can see this is an outbound transaction. I also have the ability to create additional attachments. I can take photos of the product. I can record a video showing us doing the implementation or installation of the product. So everything about that product I can record here against the customer equipment card, including, if required, a manufacturer's serial number. So the customer equipment card is really the central point if you are going to do equipment-based servicing. The next thing that uh, once you've got your customer equipment card set up that you may want to look at is the service contract capability. So I'm going to call up an existing service contract and we'll take a look at that. So the service contract allows me to record obviously the customer details. Then I can specify what service type is it. Is it regular or is it warranty service? So I can create a service contract that covers a product that's under warranty or I can create a service contract that covers all other non-warranty related service. I can specify if this service contract relates to a customer, so I'm giving the customer coverage. I can specify am I giving them coverage for a particular item group. I can also specify if I'm giving them coverage for a specific serial numbered item. In this case, this product is, uh, or this service contract relates to serial numbered items. And then I can create these templates that specify all of this other uh, content or all the other parameters of this service contract. So this is my silver warranty template. 
I'm specifying a 12 hour response time and a guaranteed three day resolution time. I can specify a status. Is it approved? Is the contract on hold? Is it in draft or is it terminated? And then I can also specify the owner of the contract and if there is a renewal process that needs to go on automatically at the end of the contract period. I could specify then all of the underlying items that are covered on that service contract. And you can see this customer has bought multiple server point 10,000 units from me, but each one has a different serial number. So during the sales process, I'm able to record that particular serial number against the service contract. You can see for this contract, I'm able to specify all of the coverage hours and am I covering parts, labor, travel, or all of them. So again, the idea here is to be able to get a really good picture of exactly the level of coverage that you are providing. So at any point in time, any one of your team can look up that information and can know what the coverage terms are. Again, I've got attachments to the service contract. For example, I might have scanned in a signed copy of the service agreement. So I can attach that to SAP Business One to this record. I'm also then able to see any service calls that have happened against that service contract. And then I can also, of course, see any sales data related to that service contract. The third area that's covered in the service module of SAP Business One, of course, once you've set up your customer equipment cards and your service contracts, is the ability to uh, manage your service calls. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new service call. Let's say I've just received a call from a customer and it's Earthshaker. So all I do is I pick Earthshaker Corporation and it's telling me just be aware that no valid contracts currently exist for this customer. But that's okay. Uh, I want to go ahead and I want to record a service call anyway. So it then gives me the ability to do a lookup and see all of the pieces of equipment that I've actually sold to Earthshaker and all the serial numbers. Now they might say, look, this doesn't actually relate to a specific item. So all this is, it is a service call related to a general um, issue that they may have. So I can go in here and I can say, uh, what's the subject? Call regarding poor customer service. So then I can go in here and I can now specify the details of that call. How did the call come in? Did it come in via email, over the phone? Did it come in through social media? And in this case, you can see I've got Twitter set up as one of my uh, origin points. If I'm running a Facebook page and people have come in and uh, have got the ability to provide feedback via Facebook, I can put that in. And it's simple as going in here into Define New and I can put in Facebook. And this can be our Facebook page. And I'll say Update, OK. And now I'll say this came in via Facebook. So what's the problem type? Is it hardware, software, training? Or is it something that's not covered? Well, I have the rights to be able to add to that. So I'm going to create a new definition and I'm going to call it, it's a customer service issue. So I'll say customer service issue and I'll say update. So I've now got that in there. So I can say this is a customer service issue. What call type was it? And Again, the idea behind having a range of these predefined is that it makes it much easier for you to then do reporting. So this is a complaint call and complaint logging is what we're doing. So I'll say update and OK. So then what I can do is I can now take this call if I want to at this point and I can assign it to a technician or I can go ahead and continue to process the call. Who was it handled by? Well, it was handled by me, Richard Duffy. So I can now go into my remarks. I can say, um, Bob called and he had an issue regarding a recent 
interaction with the field service team. All right, then I can now start recording my activities. I can record some solutions. I can record any expenses that were incurred addressing this particular service call, a resolution, and I can get a full history. But right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to update that service call. So now I've got a service call created. And then if I go and look at this service call now, you can see it's been created for me. And I'm able to now go ahead and start handling that service call. So I'm gonna allocate it to a technician for the sake of the exercise. I'm gonna allocate it to Richard Duffy. Again, I say update, that's now done. And I can continue now to work with this particular service call. I can add additional remarks. I can create additional activities. So I'm gonna create an activity now. So one of those activities is a phone call. So I've made a phone call to the customer and it's a customer service call. The su subject, I'm gonna define a new subject here. And this is a complaint follow-up. Now, once I've created this once, I can then continue to use that. I don't have to put this in every single time. I'm just doing that for the purposes of showing you uh, how flexible the system is. So it's a complaint follow-up. Who's it assigned to? Now I can assign this to any one of our employees, not just a service technician. In this case, I'm gonna assign it to myself and then I can put in some remarks. Called Bob to explain the situation and offered to discount Okay, so let's go back there, sorry, and offered discount. So then I can go in and I can put in more detailed content about what I discussed with Bob. Offered Bob a 5% discount when he renews his maintenance to say, Sorry for the poor experience. Bob was happy with the resolution. So that's done. Do I want to link it to a document? Well, yep, I can if I want to. I can link it to one of my um, other transactions, let's say for example, Bob called complaining about a service interaction and that service interaction was linked to a particular sales order. So I can go in here into sales orders and then I can look up all the sales orders for Earthshaker and I can now link this entire activity to, the, um, to that particular sales order. So what is this doing? This is giving me a 360 degree view of all the interactions that I have with my customers. So that's all fine. Now, if I want to, I can schedule a follow-up call just by clicking here on follow-up. Okay, first thing I need to do though is I need to add that activity. Once I've added the activity that I can schedule a follow-up call to call him in a week uh, and make sure he was happy with how everything was now or whatever the case may be. Or I can flag the call as closed and say add. And that's now done. And you'll see I now have that activity flagged against my service call. The solution, I can recommend a solution and this is gonna pull from our knowledge base. In this case, uh, I don't have uh, a solution. The solutions database is really more for um, predefined hardware or software related solutions that you may have created using the service call functionality. Of course, you can add solutions in there for your people to choose from. So for example, let's say you do give your customer service people the ability to offer a discount you want to make sure it's not just done in an ad hoc basis the way I did it, 
but you want to make sure that they only offer resolutions that are in your knowledge base, then of course you can put that in there, offer the 5% customer satisfaction discount on next order or whatever the case may be. But that's it. That's my service call and it's now been um, dealt with and I can set my call status now to closed. Now in order for me to close that, I actually need to put in a solution or a resolution. Now I can go to my resolution offered Bob a discount on his next order and he agreed that he was satisfied with the outcome. And then I'll say closed and update that and now my service call is closed. So that's a little bit of an overview of utilizing that service call functionality. So we looked at the service contracts, we looked at the customer equipment cards and then we looked at the process of creating a service call generically uh, against a customer. Let's take a look at a couple of the service reports as well that you can get within the system. So you are able to obviously go ahead and view all of the service calls that are in the system currently. You can put all these parameters to determine, I just wanna see service calls created on a certain date or between certain dates, resolved between certain dates, calls that have been handled by a certain person. You can even narrow them down and just say, look, I only wanna see customer service problems. You've got total flexibility there to not only put the information in, but start reporting on it. In this case, I'm gonna select everything and you can now see uh, what I have is a complete picture of all of those service calls that are in the system and I can specify the service calls broken down by month or by week and I can specify if I've got a bar or a line graph. So it's now mapping out every single one of those service calls and I can then generate that report with a simple click. So there's my service call report and as I can with all the other reports, choose print graph, run the report again and now I get it with the graph attached to the report. One of the other things which people really like is the ability to run uh, a service monitor. So how does the service monitor work? The service monitor gives you a real-time update of all of the open calls that you have going on in the system. So you'll see I'm telling this to refresh every one second, but I could say I want to see this refreshed every 30 minutes and every 30 minutes is going to refresh this and show me how many open service calls I have. I can narrow this down. I'll say I want to see all the service calls being handled by everyone. I can specify a priority. I only want to track certain uh, service calls. So for example, I only want to track high priority service calls. Uh, then I can also specify how many open calls I want to have as a limit how many overdue calls I want to have as a limit, and then if I've exceeded those limits, the system is going to start sounding an alarm. So if I go in here and I'm going to choose my priorities, I'm going to say all of them, and I'll say okay. I'll say my open calls limit is one, and then I'm going to set my refresh to be every one second, what you'll now see is my line has gone red and I've told the system to sound an alarm. So now when I open up my service monitor, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a regular uh, visual trigger that I actually have a problem here that I've got a, um, a service call situation which is out of scope for the service parameters that I want to manage and monitor. So that's the service monitoring capabilities inside the service module. You can also quickly and easily uh, get a view of all of your open service calls that you're managing and you can view uh, all of just your open service calls, you can view your overdue service calls, 
and I'm kind of lucky because I don't have any overdue service calls right now, so I'm doing well. Other reports you can see as well, things like average closure time. How long is it taking you to close your service calls? The kinds of things that you would need to be monitoring. The time for closure, you know, uh, closed immediately, uh, 0.1 of an hour. Uh, I've got a whole range of different uh, closure rates. And then as you can see, actually I've got uh, one there with a quarter of an hour. So my average is 0 0.01 hours to close calls effectively. So I'm able to get all of that information very, very quickly and easily out of the service module. If you've got any questions about the service module and how that functionality works and how it might specifically apply to your organization, you can quickly and easily click on the ask a question button and one of our team will get back to you as soon as possible.